Hello and welcome to Make It With Miss Mandy. Today we are going to be creating this 3D sewing machine. This is a fun paper craft that includes a little drawer down here that can be opened and closed. So you can even store any little bits and bobs that you'd like in there. So you can get this free template over at designsbymissmandy.com and then gather up your supplies and let's get started. The supplies you'll need for this project are cardstock, about 10 sheets in various colors, hot glue, precision craft glue or a glue stick, some thread or twine, a lollipop stick, a cutting machine or X-Acto knife, and my template which can be found at designsbymissmandy.com. Other optional but helpful supplies include foam tape, decorative ribbon, and a bone folder. If you need help figuring out how to set up the file that includes score lines, be sure to check out the tutorial I made on the subject. All of my pieces are cut out now and we're ready to get going. So I'm just going to take these three pieces here, along with these three pieces, and these are the ones we're gonna focus on. Everything else, I'm just going to set aside for the time being. So you can probably tell that these are going to be matched up together. These are little decorative panels. They're gonna go on the fronts of these three pieces. So I'm just gonna use some glue and attach them. Now that these are done, the next thing we're going to do is to start to build the body of the sewing machine. So I'm gonna set these two pieces aside. We're gonna focus just on this piece to start with. Then you're gonna take these three pieces. These are your longer, wider, rectangle, rectangular pieces that have all these little tabs on the sides. Uh, there's three different ones and you're gonna have to try to figure out where they go. It's kind of like a little puzzle. But I'll give you some clues as to how you can figure this out. So this one is gonna go on the right hand side and this one is pretty easy to tell because it has a hole in it. Um, there's also this little section at the bottom with a tab on the end that indicates that this is going to be part of the bottom of the sewing machine. This one also has a little tab on the bottom, so this is also going to be one of the bottom pieces. Uh, and then this one has a lot of little tabs on it and not as many long tabs. The long tabs are for straight edges and the small tabs are for curved edges. So basically what we're looking at is this piece is going to come up and curve along here go straight up here for a while, and then it's going to turn and just finish off right here. And then we're gonna use this one to pick up where we left off. It's going to attach along this curved edge where you see all these little pieces, and then have a little straight edge here, turn and come across and finish on the left side of our sewing machine. Then with this piece, you're gonna come, it's gonna start right here on the bottom, on the underside of the sewing machine and come up around here, follow this curve, then follow this curve and finish. So there you go, those are the three pieces we're going to use. These are basically just going to follow that perimeter that I just pointed out and I'm just going to take it just a couple tabs at a time, starting by folding along the score lines. Here's what it looks like with the first one attached. And now I'm just gonna keep going around with these two. With those three pieces attached, we're just gonna flip this over and attach the back side. 
And this is going to be a little bit tricky sometimes, but um, if it gets, ever gets too tight, I'm just going to use my precision craft glue to kind of slip it in there and just do the pieces a little bit at a time. And we'll get through it. With the main structure of our sewing machine complete, the last thing we're going to do to finish it off is just to add the last decorative panels, which are these four pieces. So these two shorter pieces are a little bit easier to figure out. Um, the one with the hole in it is just going to go on this side and match up like that. This other smaller one is going to go on this other flat side here. And then these two are very similar in length so you're going to have to tell them apart by folding along the score line so find the score lines this one's here and here so this piece that has like a smaller side and of course i folded those the wrong way but we can just fold them back um so this one that has the shorter side and the longer side is going to go on the underside of the sewing machine like that and then this decorative piece that has more even sides is going to go over top so that's backwards but there we go like that so let's just add some glue to these and get these tacked on The next thing we're going to work on is the needle and for this you're going to take your two needle pieces which are these small little silver pieces here this little rectangular strip with all the little tabs and these two circles one of which has a tiny little slit in it which I'm going to widen just slightly there you go hopefully now you can see it okay so first things first, I'm just going to glue, I'm going to set this aside a little bit. Um, I'm going to glue these two pieces together, but I'm going to leave the little tabs on the top unglued. Next, I'm going to take this piece and give it a little curl. Then take this end tab here, add some glue. and form a ring like so after that i'm going to fold all of these little tabs inward on both sides then i'm going to take my solid circle and attach it Now before attaching my other circle, I'm going to take the ends of my needle and slip them through this slit right here and then glue these little tabs down. Now that my needle's attached to this circle, I can attach it to this piece. And with this all done, we can attach it to the underside of our sewing machine. The next thing we're going to do is make our hand wheel that will go on the back of the sewing machine. That is this section right here. So gather up these pieces. We've got a couple of smaller circles that have a matching 
strip like this. And then our two bigger circles, including the one that we put a decorative piece on earlier, and this longer strip. So I'm gonna start with the smaller one first. And we're just going to build this really similarly to how you did this piece, just on a slightly larger scale. I'm just gonna curl this around. Add some glue. Fold all of my tabs inward. Then I will attach this solid circle. Now before attaching this side, I do want to add a little bit of a lollipop stick into it first and glue it down. Um, I don't want it to be this long though, so I'm going to cut it um, to be a little shorter. Usually I, I just do this with scissors and kind of hack away at it until I have it. But then I remember that I have this cool like PVC pipe cutter thing that I usually just use to cut dowels and things like that. I don't usually work with PVC pipe very much. But um, I've been using it for lollipop sticks too and it works a little bit easier than uh, you know my normal just hack away at it with scissors. Look at that. The other piece just flew across the room, but there you go. So yeah, PVC pipe cutter if you want to cut dowels or lollipop sticks really easily. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna do this, push it through the hole and glue it with a bunch of hot glue and then stick it on. All right, next we are going to make this wheel piece and I think you can figure out how to do this one. <laughs> All right, these two pieces are done and now we just need to connect them together. And I'm just going to try to line up the little seams so that they're going the same direction. Don't have to do this, it's just something I'm going to do. Okay, now we're ready to place this into this hole. And then once I do, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I'm going to take this little circle right here and I'm going to attach it to the other end of my lollipop stick. And I might actually trim this down just a little bit. There we go, now we've got a hand wheel that turns. The next thing that we're going to focus on is the base. And this is the main section of the base. Uh, for size reasons, I couldn't include this other flap on this side, which is super annoying, but whatever. So you'll have to do this part where you just add some glue over here and attach this side. And yes, my machine tore my paper a little bit on this side, but I didn't want to recut it and waste a whole nother sheet of paper. So we're just going to roll with it. Just pretend like you can't see it. I'm just going to keep it covered. <laughs> All right, with that in place, the next thing to do is attach our decorative strips. And since these are just kind of plain right now, I am actually going to run them through my embossing machine that I have. It's this nifty little guy from Sizzix. And I'm going to find an embossing um, envelope, I think they're called, and uh, just run it through really quick. So 
So while I had my embosser out, I decided to do these yellow pieces too in this cute little polka dot pattern. Adorable, set these aside for now. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we are going to take these pieces and attach them to their corresponding sides on the base. And you shouldn't have too much trouble figuring these out, but this is where they go. All right, next we are going to fold along the score lines and then start assembling this. The colors I chose for this are giving me Cinderella vibes. This blue, like her dress, and then the pink, like her original dress. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Okay, now let's start assembling this by adding some glue to these inner tabs. And then attaching the sides together. And with that assembled, we can now attach our sewing machine. First, I'm just going to widen these slits a little bit with an X-Acto knife to make it a little bit easier. Then we'll take our sewing machine and use these little tabs at the bottom to slip these in. Then I'm just going to tack these down with some hot glue. With that attached, we are now ready to make our drawer. For our drawer, it's pretty simple. It's just this piece and this one, but we are going to need this piece uh, before we can put it into the base. So just set this one aside for a second and take this piece and fold along the score lines. All right, I forgot to mention it, but <laughs> all you have to do is add glue to those tabs and do kind of the same thing you did with the base, fold it inward, and there you go, you've got your little drawer. Then we're gonna, going to attach the face of the drawer, and this is going to overhang a little bit, so actually viewing it from this angle is like the most helpful when you're gluing it. So just take one of your long sides, add some glue, if my glue will stop clogging. There we go. Just gotta muscle it. Okay. And attach the drawer face. Now I'm just going to add a little handle to my drawer with a piece of ribbon. And if I can find some scissors. and a couple of little beads. So this piece is done, and now before we slide it into place, we just need to take this piece, fold along the score lines, And then this is going in underneath our base just to act as a support for the drawer. So this doesn't go all the way across the bottom. Just try to keep it centered so that um, it can support the drawer in the middle. And we're just going to, um, if you can see out here, this section is the same height as this section right here. So this is just going to help give you an idea of where to line it up. So just try to keep this bottom part in line with this 
And make sure that you're gluing it in uh, this way so that it's like up and not inward because if you do it like this, then it's not gonna support anything. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we can slip the drawer inside. Moment of truth. Ta-da! We are on the home stretch here and just have a few pieces left. These are my pieces for my spool. And this is basically just a taller version of the other ring type things we've made. You're just going to curl this around and use this tab to connect it on the end. Then fold each of the tabs inward. And then take the matching circles and attach them to the top and bottom. Now we're going to attach our larger circles to the top and bottom. And then to finish off our spool, we are going to use some thread, or in this case, baker's twine. I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to attach the end of my thread and then wrap it around. The spool is done. I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. Next, I'm going to take these two pieces, this silver piece and this other smaller rectangle, and glue them together. And then this is going to attach underneath the needle right here, and I'm gonna to try to keep it kind of centered under the needle. This circle is just going to attach right here, and I'm going to adhere it with a couple pieces of foam tape. everything else in place, I'm now going to attach my spool. I'm also going to add just a tiny amount of hot glue right here so that the string can attach so it'll stay taut. And our sewing machine is complete. Congratulations on completing this adorable sewing machine paper craft. Thanks for watching this video and for crafting along with me. I hope you had an enjoyable time making this project. Don't forget, I always love to see your finished results, so be sure to share them with me on Instagram, tagging at Designs by Miss M. And special thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this paper craft, please consider becoming a supporter. Not only will you help keep the designs coming, but you can have a chance to help me pick new designs in the future. As a patron, you can even get awesome exclusive content like postcards and enamel pins in the mail. Thanks again for watching and happy crafting.